Hey guys, welcome to your 21st, I think, Roblox Lua GUI scripting tutorial. And as promised in the last video, uh, today I'm going to show you how to use context action service buttons. I think my memory's foggy. That video was too long. I need to I need to make my video shorter. So that's what we're going to do today, but first, um, update you guys on what I've been doing. I've been really busy the past couple weeks. I've been getting a lot of stuff together for my, the release of my upcoming game, Octopus. And uh, if you guys haven't watched this video right here called Swimming Octopus, <laughs> that's a test I did with Smooth Terrain Water in one of the maps. It's pretty neat, I might implement that one day. I don't know. But, uh, so tomorrow, probably early afternoon Eastern Time, is going to be the release of Octopus. I'm going to advertise it a lot, and uh, hopefully it does really well. Um, so, another thing that happened, Roblox got in contact with me a couple weeks ago, and they asked me if... I would like to have my game Mountaineer featured on PC and tablet. Uh, I don't know if you guys are familiar with this game, but that's my game Mountaineer. You go to games, you scroll down to featured, there it is right there, and it's also there for tablets. Uh, so yeah, Octopus released Friday. Hopefully, um, I'm so what I'm doing is I'm advertising my channel as well as the game uh, sort of through the game so people are gonna a lot of people are gonna see my channel as well as the game so what I want to do is after I have a bigger audience you know I only have like 1200 subscribers right now after I have a bigger audience that's when I want to make a lot of the important videos that you guys have been requesting. Like, uh, I want to do a series on game development, not just scripting, developing a game on camera with you guys. Uh, because, you know, I guess that's what most of you guys are here for anyway. I want to show you guys a good practice and such. Uh, you know, mobile compatibility, console compatibility. I'm just getting started with that myself, but it's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, so uh, I'm probably going to make a video tomorrow, too, or the next day, just sometime soon, uh, about how Octopus went, and hopefully do another tutorial. I have a couple good videos lined up for you guys. So, I uh, actually need to... Uh, yeah, my bad. I meant to open this file already. I don't know why I started with a separate file. I should have already done this. Uh, okay. In on but key code dot left shift. Uh, true, it is going to make a mobile button. So, another feature I'm going to show you guys today is <coughs> the emulator. And, uh, physical size. Okay, so the emulator, uh, it does emulations of different devices. So it basically turns your studio into uh, a different device, sort of. Like, when it's off, it's just a PC, your regular PC or laptop or whatever. You can, uh, you know, switch to different resolutions and stuff. Uh, console, phone, tablet. I uploaded a or I made a resolution to fit my NVIDIA K2 tablet so I could test as if I was on my own tablet. Uh, so we're just going to use the Samsung Galaxy, Galaxy X7 since I guess that's a fairly small resolution and I don't know if a lot of people still use an iPhone 4S. So uh, yeah, you, you generally if you're gonna add mobile compatibility you generally want to work on a small resolution just to cater to those smaller screen sizes so yeah uh, okay so 
if you're emulating on the phone or a tablet, uh, let's sort of local ser a test server. That's this is this is cool. You'll see what it's about to do for you. It gives you that control scheme to work with. The emulator is super useful. I use it probably every day. So it's just like as if you were on mobile. You go into player GUI. Uh, you see this touch stuff. Yeah, like it's all there. It's pretty cool. And here's that context action service button we just created. So, uh, jump button. I'm actually not sure if. Uh, I'm not sure if we if we see that uh, context action service button in our player GUI. Yeah, I don't think it's there, but the jump button's there, as you can see. Jump. I don't know how I messed that up. Haha. -ha. Um, but yeah, basically, what we're gonna do here is make sure that uh, the sprint works with the button. So, I'm going to press F1 to go to the wiki, context, action service. Um, so, to work with our mobile button, we have a few methods uh, of context action service we can use. There's a... Uh, nice. No, they didn't add anything new. I thought they added something new for a second. Uh, but... Maybe they, maybe they did. I don't know, I'll look at that later. So what we have here is we set description, set image, set position, set title. Um, if action name key contains a bound action, title set as a title, position, image, blah, blah, blah. Uh, image. I, I want to say I messed with image a while ago and it didn't work, but I'm probably very wrong about that. I'm sure setting an image does work. Uh, I usually just use set title and set description because if you're if you have a mobile user, you don't want to have a big long description for them to read. I would just use set title. Um, so CAS set title sprint uh, sprint CS. Uh, I'm going to use set description here too, just to demonstrate it. Sprint hold to sprint, I think. Uh, and CS set position position sprint. Um, so you can't really set the position of this button to anywhere on the screen. I think it's supposed to be around this, around the area of this jump button. Uh, and whatever position you, I was confused about this at first, but any position you set it to, it's gonna be relative to this jump button, as if you were. I was gonna say as if you were using scale, but that's not really accurate. Uh, so pos pos <coughs> position is a udim to. Oh shoot, guys! I was about to take a sip of my lemonade and I just forgot it. One second. back guys I left it in the other room uh, this is why my videos are so long uh, so um, we'll put it to negative point five zero ne negative point five zero for testing purposes since we maybe want it to be a little left of the jump button so that's I guess 50% uh, of the jump buttons position or in negatives it's gonna go to the left of it that's what I'm trying to show you okay that's uh, not what we wanted probably have to do some tinkering with this like a lot okay you know let's just 
I swear. Really? It does it start up there or something? Okay, let's try. 10 pixels. Okay, we're getting closer. And you guys might want to this is a good tinker with this based on needs for your game your particular case uh, right now I'm pressing down on shift because apparently that still works but uh, I don't think I can walk and then press sprint but you see it's changing the walk speed and it's going down you don't need to keep tapping it like I am I'm going to press hold shift and it would get faster. So in the emulator, you'll be able to press shift. But yeah. So uh, you can bind and unbind mobile buttons, uh, you know, based on what your user is doing in the game. Say you wanted them to, uh, you wanted one to appear when they got close to a car or something uh, like tap to enter vehicle uh, you know you could make that invisible using calculating the vector 3 magnitude between the player and the car and then and then a uh, binding action or unbinding action or uh, something I do in octopus is whenever a user opens the shop since it's mobile and it's a shop and the inventory is also built into the shop um, I make it like take up most of the pretty much all of the screen so I'd be sure to make all the other GUIs in my game invisible and uh, turn off the chat using uh, set core GUI enabled game get service starter set core core GUI enabled enum dot core GUI type dot here are your options uh, another useful piece of information if you set the if you do a game get service game get service starter GUI set oh uh, wait set core top bar enabled false I don't know it's something like that I know you can do set top bar transparency to 0.5 or 0 or there's a set core there's top bar enabled somewhere and that'll be true or false but basically if you set the top bar enabled to false then all the core GUIs in your game are going to be turned off automatically but I don't think that happens when you use set top bar transparency uh, so yeah I uh, what I was saying before, I just unbind all the context action service buttons when I make that, when I turn that full sized shop GUI on because, uh, when I make it visible because it's going to get in the way. So, you know, be mindful of your players, uh, your mobile players, they're important. You got to give them a good user experience. Uh, so next video I think is gonna be me telling you guys how octopus goes this weekend and then hopefully I'll do another tutorial sometime sometime afterwards uh, for the umpteenth time I'm really sorry I haven't been uploading but you know after I get a bigger audience I'm gonna upload those important videos more that you guys have been wanting so for now peace out guys see you this weekend